The floor is yours. Thank you. So the previous speaker has already nicely set up a couple of uh, concepts that will be relevant in my talk. Um, and I want to point out that this is a, a research done in collaboration with uh, Stefan Matzka from Harriet Watt University. So let me briefly talk you through uh, the overview of my talk. Uh, I'm going to start with an introduction. Then I will review a couple of already established uh, uh, measures of object existence. The previous speaker has already uh, used one of the algorithms to compute such a uh, uh, probability of existence. The main part of my talk will be uh, the computation, uh, the algorithm uh, for a, a new uh, probability of existence using a generalization of Bayes estimation. I will back this up with uh, experimental results and I will end the talk with conclusions. So uh, let me start with the introduction. So everybody is familiar with uh, driver assistance systems such as adaptive cruise control or lane departure warning. Uh, now there are new systems uh, coming to the market. They are highly intrusive driver assistance systems. Uh, and namely, they uh, exert a massive override of the driver's input. Uh, so uh, I'm talking about automatic emergency brake, AEB, or a collision mitigation braking where the vehicle uh, automatically executes, uh, uh, autonomously executes uh, a braking maneuver in order to uh, avoid a, a collision or mitigate a collision. Now, since this is, and this can be done in, in, in the case of automatic emergency brake, this uh, will be done with a deceleration of up to 1G. So this is a um, massive override of the driver's input. Uh, if there are any um, 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 erroneous function triggers or false alarms, this would be very annoying to the driver, not only annoying to the driver, it could actually be dangerous or lethal to the driver in case of a rear end collision. So false alarms are unacceptable. Clearly, no one can say that uh, there are no false alarms in, 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 a, in a certain mechanical system or, or electrical system. However, they have to be kept an absolute minimum. So a typical requirement from OEMs is like one false alarm per one million driven kilometers or even one false alarm per 10 million driven kilometers. So how do we go about fulfilling such a, uh, such a condition? Well, you impose qualifying conditions in order to reduce this number of false alarms. Um, one possibility would be a time to collision, the time that is uh, um, is spent until a collision with another vehicle is, is, uh, is there, or a collision probability, namely the prob probability that I'm on a colliding path with another vehicle. Those two conditions would be on the level of a situation assessment of a estimation of fusion system. Um, another condition would be a probability of existence. The probability of existence has already been mentioned by the previous speaker. What do I mean by that? Well, in an um, estimation module and a fusion system, the tracked objects do not necessarily correspond to real or relevant objects. They can be spurious objects based on spurious radar detections, or they can correspond to real objects, but they are irrelevant for the function at hand, for example, a, a, can, of, a can of Coke. So now that I've introduced the concept of a probability of existence, I want to briefly review a couple of algorithms for the computation of such a measure. Probably the, the, the best known uh, measure is the track score, as well described in Blackman's book. It is represented by the logarithmic likelihood ratio. Um, I go a little bit in detail here because it nicely sets up the notation. So this is the expression for the uh, logarithmic likelihood ratio. Here, the inverted E is the hypothesis of existence, and uh, ZK is the um, measurement history, the, uh, the complete set of measurements associated with that object. Now, this can be trivially rewritten using Bayes' theorem. Uh, uh, so you arrive at uh, this expre expression. Okay. Um, so you can see that the, the, the logarithmic likelihood ratio is a direct measure of the probability of existence. Now, usually in an estimator, you have a 
temporal update and a measurement update uh, for the track score. The temporal update is trivial. There is no dynamical model. And the measurement update proceeds via Bayes estimation, which means for a simple binary hypothesis, we have an increment of the logarithmic likelihood ratio, which is the, the logarithm of the quotient of the ratio of uh, detection likelihoods. Actually, it turns out if you uh, read Blackman's book more carefully, uh, it wants the uh, uh, kinematic state information is taken into account. There's a slight deviation from Bayes estimation already. So let me talk about other algorithms that compute a probability of existence. Well, this has been mentioned before, the Integrated Probabilistic Data Association or Joint Integrated Probabilistic Data Association. This is an integral combination of the PDA or JPDA associ association techniques with a probability of existence. Going one step further, there is the probability hypothesis density filter where you have the probability, the hypothesis density function estimates the number of objects in a given uh, uh, volume of state, and you can also extract individual probabilities of the existence from individual modes of this hypothesis density function. And you can also obtain probabilities of existence from video detection has also been, been mentioned before. So um, um, another uh, one can, could get an, an empirical probability from a classifier score using uh, training data, or it has also been uh, uh, worked out in literature that cascaded classifiers such as Viola Jones can be enlarged to probabilistic boosting trees in order to obtain a probability. So, all of these uh, techniques, uh, in one way or other, rely on Bayes estimation. And uh, now let's take a closer look what actually the assumption is that goes into Bayes estimation. In Bayes estimation, uh, the one assumption, the key assumption, is that the state xk, xk is now a gen generic state, can be continuous or discrete, is complete. What does completeness mean? Completeness means that this um, likelihood uh, function, the, the probability of a new measurement given the state and the history of the previous measurements is actually independent of that state. It's actually this well-known measurement likelihood function. This means that the state completely encapsulates the information uh, in those uh, previous measurements. The state contains the entire information uh, so it is the representative of the, of the history of all the observations. Now, this places a heavy burden on, on the designer of an, of an estimation system because this state can be potentially very large. It can be too large to be actually computationally estimatable, estimatable as I put it in wrong English. So the, the state could be as large as it could contain the hypothesis of existence. It could contain the kinematic state. It could contain information about the weather because we know that, uh, for example, a video detector is, is, is strongly influenced by the weather condition, conditions. It could contain other environmental features and could, could, they, could contain uh, relations to other objects in the tracker. On the other hand, in frameworks where the state uh, probability distribution function factorized or is assumed to factorize, the state is just a binary hypothesis. So we are left with just this binary hypothesis of existence. And clearly here, um, it is certainly imaginable that there are uh, measurement histories uh, that where this information is not completely encapsulated in just this simple binary state. So here is where generalized Bayes estimation comes into play. So in a generalized Bayes estimation, so the Bayes estimation clearly is concerned with the, with the update step using new sensory information, the state is considered incomplete. So I do not make any assumptions. Either I do not make any assumptions about this expressions, or I restrict this measurement history, which can be potentially infinite, to a finite 
measurement history. And in the experimental results, I'll be using a finite measurement history of depth eight. Now, uh, once you've uh, once you did not make the the usual assumption in Bayes estimation, clearly one has to rederive the formula the, for the iterative update of a Bayes estimation estimator, and uh, I, I cannot certainly do this in this talk. So I refer you to the uh, to my paper. Uh, the result is actually surprisingly simple. It's just the same as a as an ordinary Bayes estimator, with the exception with the exception that now those measurement likelihoods are those generalized measurement likelihoods. And if that state X is now just a binary hypothesis, hypothesis of existence, then the increment, the, 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 the base updates, the, the increment of the logarithmic likelihood ratio is exactly as before but just using those generalized measurement likelihoods. As an example, uh, given, say, if you have a very simple sensor that only detects an object, doesn't make any kinematic uh, measurements, but only detects an object, then it certainly uh, is, is reasonable to assume that the probability of a detection, given that the object exists, and given that it has been detected in the previous three cycles, is bigger than the probability of a detection given that the object exists and it has not been seen in the previous three cycles. So in ordinary Bayes estimation, you couldn't write down this expression because you would only have P of D given that the object exists. Okay. So now let me briefly talk about the uh, temporal update. The temporal update has to be specified uh, 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 explicitly. So uh, uh, in general, as in the track score, uh, it makes sense that an object, that an object's existence does not change over time, unless you're in a military setting where objects can be spawned and can be destroyed. Nevertheless, I chose to model the dynamics with a Markov chain, uh, albeit with a very small birth and destruction probability. The reason for this was that uh, I want, uh, with this uh, Markov chain, I want to counteract any unmodeled uh, unmodeled effects that would lead to a too high probability of existence. This is this very simple Markov model. So let me talk about uh, results. We have implemented this uh, generalized base estimation in a test vehicle with a uh, collision mitigation braking system that is uh, using a 77 gigahertz radar sensor with a cycle time of 40 milliseconds. The crucial point is now the modeling of the logarithmic likelihood ratio. Here we choose a very simple heuristic approach. So we have uh, this in principle very complicated uh, uh, logarithmic likelihood ratio and we chose it to be modeled as a linear superposition of single measurement likelihood ratios. So. Here, this was just a simple ansatz to, uh, to derive this as a linear superposition of individual measurement likelihoods. And in addition, we assumed certain heuristic rules, which I will come to later. Now the question is, how did we model those individual measurement likelihoods? Well, here we used a standard uh, assumption um, we, as a uh, the target fluctuation mood model, we use the swirling one target model. The noise model in the radar detection was assumed to be a Gaussian clutter. And the detection scheme was a CAC far detector, a cell averaging constant false alarm rate detector. So, how did this fare uh, with the real data? Here you can see a plot of the uh, logarithmic likelihood ratio, um, the x-axis is the is a, uh, time. On the upper plot, the y-axis is the logarithmic likelihood ratio. Um, the blue line is the base estimation, and the red line is the generalized base estimation. And corresponding on the lower plot, you can see the, the ap amplitude in decibels of the radar detection. Now you can see a couple of spikes in the blue, blue curve. This is due to one or two missed detections uh, in, in constant following. 
And uh, here is where, where one of the heuristic rules that I was talking about comes, uh, comes into effect. Here we said that if we have one or two misdetections over uh, the measurement history of eight, we would give them very low weight. So you can see that those spikes are uh, smoothed out, and in general also the uh, red line is a lot smoother than the blue line. This is due to the uh, FIR filter of the linear superposition of those individual measurement likelihoods. Now this is just a snapshot of a couple of seconds of driving. Um, we have evaluated this over uh, a couple of driving scenarios and encapsulated this in a receiver operating characteristic. Here it is. On the uh, x-axis, you have the false existence rate. On the y-axis, the true existence rate. Again, the blue line is the, uh, the Bayes estimator, and the red line is the generalized Bayes estimator. So ordinarily, you would have uh, only a point for a single classifier. Here you have a curve. So what is the curve parameter? The curve parameter is the threshold for the logarithmic likelihood ratio above which an object would be considered uh, existent. So you can see that, except at the fringes, which you can actually not see, uh, the generalized Bayes estimator is uh, northwest of the ordinary Bayes estimator is in, is in, and is hence a better classifier. So let me come to the conclusions. The assumption underlying Bayes estimation might not always be accurate and should be uh, uh, investigated on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, you can res it is possible to relax this assumption. This uh, assumption allows, uh, relaxing this assumption allows for a small, a potentially incomplete state. Uh, there is a price you have to pay for this. I mean, there's also a reason why this assumption has been made in the beginning, otherwise you couldn't have derived the comment filter, for example. Uh, so the price that you have to pay is that the uh, uh, measurement likelihoods are modified to incorporate the entire measurement history or part of the measurement history. Now, uh, n now the crucial point is to model this generalized measurement likelihood. What we chose as a first step was a very simple heuristic model, namely adjusted linear superposition of individual measurement likelihoods. Clearly, in the second step, one would have to do optimization of fitting to training data to more complicated functions and more parameters. Um, the last thing that I want to point out is that uh, I was talking about the probability of existence as a binary state. Clearly a prob probability of existence without any reference to position doesn't make much sense because the fact that an object e exists far away on Saturn has no, has no implications for a driver assistance system. So, and so one would have to localize this probability of existence, and this is actually described in, in, in my paper, and uh, such a localization clearly also takes place in, for example, the probability hypothesis density filter, uh, uh, but unfortunately I didn't have time to talk about this here. So with this, I want to conclude my talk, and I'm happy to, uh, happy to answer questions.